Let me demonstrate the power of Lightroom's new Select Landscape Mask. As always, feel free to follow along by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description of this video. And now, let's begin. As always, we are going to start with the basic adjustments. So if you're just here for the tutorial part, make sure to check the chapters of the video. We are going to start in the basic panel, so let's expand it. I'm going to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This will just bring down the base contrast a bit and in turn I just get a bit more control over it. Also I think we need to crop the image slightly and just to make the horizon even like this maybe. For the basic adjustments I want to preserve details in the shadows and in the highlights. So the first thing I'm going to do is to bring up the exposure so we get back details from the darkest parts of the image. Just a little bit, I don't want to overdo it because the exposure will also affect the highlights of this shot. But I can bring up the shadows and I can bring up the blacks to further get out details from the darker parts. Okay, that's looking good. At the same time, I want to bring down the highlights to get back details in the sky. As I bring down the highlights, you can see we can now actually spot the cloud up there above the mountain. So let's bring it down like this. And at this point, the base exposure looks pretty good. We have details in all the areas of the image. And right at this point, we can start thinking about the contrast. Looking at the histogram, you can see we do have a little bit of room to play around with in the brighter areas. That means I can bring up the whites a bit in order to push the contrast. All right. Again, I'm not overdoing it here because we will be targeting different areas of the image with masking later on to get back contrast. At this point, I want to work on the white blends. While I do want this image to look dark and cold, I still want to bring up the temperature for the basic adjustments just to have a neutral starting point later on when further working on the colors. So let's bring it up like this. I'm not going to change the tint, but I'm going to bring down the vibrance because I want this shot to be rather desaturated. All right, and finally, we can bring up the texture, which will make the image look sharper. And I'm also going to bring up the dehaze to push the contrast a bit more. All right, that's it for the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick. You can see in the shadows and in the highlights of this image, we now have much more details due to the reduced contrast. Now we can focus on areas locally using Lightroom's new landscape mask. For that, open up the masking panel. And right here is where we can find the new mask. So let's click on it. The first time you will create this mask, Lightroom will take a while to find out which objects are included in this image. So we have sky, mountains, vegetation, water, and the natural ground. Out of all of these, we can create different masks. So let's start with the sky. As I'm hovering over the sky checkbox, you can already see the selection in the image through the red overlay. You can also see the sky mask is far from perfect, but don't worry about that for now. What I'm going to do is to click on that checkbox and click on create mask to create the sky mask. And there it is. Now we can further fine tune this mask to get rid of that mountain selection. I'm going to click on subtract. And again, I'm choosing select landscape. To clean up this selection, I'm going to click on mountains because we don't want to have this mountains selected in the sky mask. So let's click on create mask. And just like that, the mask is looking much, much cleaner. Although you can see there is still a part of this cloud selected. Not perfect, but much, much better. So what I want to do is to add some kind of light effect behind that mountain. Therefore, I don't need the whole sky to be selected. So we need to further modify this mask. I'm going to click on those three dots. I'm choosing intersect mask width and I'm choosing a radial gradient. And I'm placing that radial gradient right behind that mountain. This is the area where I want this light effect to be. For that light effect, I need to make it brighter. So I'm going to bring up the exposure. And I'm going to bring out the blacks just to add a bit more brightness without introducing any clipping in the highlights. Okay, nice. Let's continue. I want to use the landscape mask one more time. And again, I'm going to choose a sky selection mask and let's click on create mask. This time I want to target the top of the sky. So I'm going to subtract a linear gradient, getting rid of the bottom part because now I want to make the top darker. So something like this. To make it darker, I'm going to bring down the blacks and I'm going to bring down the shadows. I do think we need a little more darkness in here, so I'm going to also bring down the exposure. This will create this very dramatic looking sky. So let's go with something like this. Beautiful. 
Now for the moment, I like how the sky is looking, but I do want to enhance the details of the foreground. So let's create another select landscape mask. And this time we are choosing the natural ground. This will select the rocks in the foreground, but also the mountains in the background. So this selection again is not perfect, but it's a very good base. So let me create this mask. Then all we need to do to create a perfect selection is to subtract a linear gradient. And we're going to just cover the mountains like that. And we end up with a mask specifically targeting the rocks in the foreground. Here, I want to add a bit more punch. So let's start by bringing up the contrast. I'm also going to increase the highlights. I'm also going to increase the whites. Again, further pushing the contrast this way. At the same time, we can bring down the shadows very carefully. I really don't want to introduce any clipping. So be really, really careful here. And we can also make this area look sharper by increasing the texture and the clarity. At this point, the rocks start to look a little bit too cold. So I'm going to slightly bump up the temperature to fix that. Kind of want to have a neutral gray on these rocks. So just like that. Now I want to emphasize the highlights of the foreground. Again, we're starting with a landscape mask. Once more, choose natural ground. Click on create mask. This time, I don't need to subtract the mountains in the back because I want to intersect this mask. I'm going to click on those three dots, go to intersect mask with and choose the brush. And with the brush, I'm going to brush over all the areas of the foreground, which I want to make brighter. So right here, the top part of this rock where the highlights are, this one right here, the one in the foreground and on the side like this. I think that should be good. Maybe this one as well. And then I kind of want to dodge the area, but which means I'm going to make these selected parts brighter. I'm going to simply bring up the exposure for that. And I can also bring up the whites. This will help create depth for the foreground. And it will also kind of help as it creates these leading lines pointing towards the center of the image. But because of these adjustments, the water starts to look a little bit too dark and a little bit too blurry, I would say. So let's use another landscape mask. And this time we're going to choose the water and click on create mask. For the first water mask, I want to again modify it. I'm subtracting a linear gradient with which I'm going to subtract the water in the near foreground because I want to make the water in the distance a little bit brighter. So here, let's bring up the exposure. Okay, that's looking much, much better. I'm also going to bring up the contrast a bit. And I would say let's even increase the whites. Okay, this is helping introducing some more brightness to the shot. Let's use another landscape mask. Again, we want to target the water and click on create mask. This time I'm working on the whole body of water right here because I want to add a little bit of texture giving the water more detail this way. I'm also going to add some clarity like this. Beautiful. Okay, now what about the mountains? Again, let's start with a landscape mask and let's choose the mountains. I click create mask. And again, since we only want to target the mountains in the distance, we want to modify this mask. So subtract a linear gradient and take out the foreground. Wonderful. So I'm going to bring up the exposure for the mountains just so the whole image becomes a little bit brighter. I also want to add a bit of contrast. And let's further increase contrast by dropping the shadows without introducing any clipping. And I want to bring up the blacks because we do have a bit of clipping at this point. Just want to restore some details in here. And I'm going to reduce the clarity, making the distant mountains just look a bit softer. Okay, nice. I also want to bring down the saturation because the mountains in the distance look a bit too bluish. So that will help. And at this point, I think I need to work on the sky one more time. Of course, we don't have to select the sky through the landscape mask, but we can use the older select sky mask up in here. But again, we ended with a rather bad selection, so we still need to modify it. Let's subtract the landscape mask, choose mountains and click create mask. All right, that's much better. What I want to do for the sky is to bring out more details, especially around those clouds to make them a bit more visible. I'm going to bring up the contrast for that. I'm going to raise it quite a bit. This will have the downside of introducing a lot of saturation to the sky. So to fix that, I'm going to bring down the saturation here. Okay, and I'm also going to bring up the clarity. 
Now with the Clevertini we need to be careful because we will introduce some halo along the mountains. So let's go with something like this. Okay. Then let me add a little bit of glow. I'm using a radial gradient for that. And I'm going to place it over the brightest area of the sky right here. For the glow effect I'm going to slightly bring up the blacks. And I want to drop the dehaze. Okay. Then one more thing I want to do. Let's use a linear gradient with which I'm going to target kind of the top of the image like this. I want to make this area darker except for the bright part of the sky. So I'm going to subtract a radial gradient and I'm just getting rid of this part right here. Then for the rest I'm going to bring down the shadows and let's also slightly drop the exposure. All right, that's looking great. So that's the image of the masking adjustments. And as you can see, we mostly only used the new landscape mask, which works really, really great, as you can see, for very precise selections. Although we do have to tweak it from time to time. Now let me turn off all the masks to see the difference from before, from a rather flat image to after. Much better better. Now let's continue with a little bit of color grading. I'm going to head into the color mixer here. I want to bring down the saturation of the yellow tones and the green tones just to be safe because I want this image to have a cold dark look and I'm also going to slightly bring down the blue saturation. Okay now in order to not lose too much color I'm going into the color grading panel for some split toning. I don't want to affect the highlights because I like how these look in this image, but I want to use the shadows and the midtones to make this image look even colder. So for the shadows, bring up the hue to a cold color tone right around here. And let's bring up the saturation a bit, like this. And I'm doing the same for the midtones. So set up the hue and bring up the saturation just a little bit. All right, perfect. Then I'm going to head into the calibration panel I'm going to bring down the blue primary hue a little bit like that. And let's bring up the saturation. Wonderful. Now the only thing left to do is the sharpening in the details panel. Let's do that. I'm going to bring down the radius all the way. Let's increase the details all the way up. Then hold on the all key while we apply some masking like this and bring up the amount of sharpening. That's it. We are done editing this image. And I hope this whole landscape mask tutorial will be helpful for your images. Let me know what you think about this tutorial and if you have any questions left, feel free to write a comment. Thank you so much for watching this video and see you all next time.